On October 3rd, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln said, the year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. President Lincoln therefore declared the fourth Thursday, November, as he put it, a day of thanksgiving praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. As we dwell on the wonderful blessings that we've received from our great, loving Creator God, I'd like to use the sermon at time to focus on one blessing that all Christians should be thankful for. My goal today is to grow your appreciation for this amazing blessing. And that blessing is the grace of God. More specifically, the unmerited forgiveness that we receive from God. The pardon from the death penalty that our sins have rightly earned. This is one of the most amazing blessings and incredible things we could possibly hope for. King Solomon wrote that there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. And of course, by saying that, he means there's not an individual on earth that only does good and never sins. And for your notes, that's in reference in Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20. Aside from Jesus Christ, all humans that have ever lived and ever will live have committed sins and will sin again. The Apostle Paul told us that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So please turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 18. This is a section of Scripture that addresses God's approach to sin and forgiveness. So let's start with Ezekiel 18.20. So Ezekiel 18.20 reads, The soul that sins shall die. And as we know, the death mentioned here does not refer to our physical death. The death referenced in this scripture refers to a final and permanent death. Aside from the few who will live through the tribulation and the return of Jesus Christ, we will all die a physical death. This scripture, however, is referring to a final and permanent death reserved in a lake of fire for those who refuse to repent of their sins. So let's drop down to Ezekiel 18, verse 21. Continuing on, But if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live and not die. So we will all face a physical death, but we also see that those who repent and turn away from their sins will not face a final death, but instead shall have eternal life. So continuing in Ezekiel 18, 22, none of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness that he has done, he shall live. So how great is that? If we repent, not only does God forgive us, but our sins are remembered no more. There's an article on Life, Hope, and Truth by Mr. Bruce Gore called God's Forgiveness. In this article, Mr. Gore says that there is no sin so great that God will not forgive if we repent and seek his forgiveness. So as long as we repent and turn towards God, there is a path to forgiveness and eternal life. God will remember our sins no more. 
There are no sins too big for God to forgive. There's no gotcha clauses. There's no fine print. There's no legal ease to get caught up in. If we repent, God provides a path to forgiveness and to eternal life. But what if we repent and sin again? To address this question, please turn with me to Matthew 18, verse 21. Matthew 18, 21. Now, this is a story that we typically associate with a lesson about how we are to treat each other, and that's certainly a correct and appropriate interpretation of the story. However, this set of scripture also contains a lesson about how, how God treats us. So in Matthew 18, 21, Peter asks, Peter speaking to Jesus, he says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times, right? So if someone sins, and forget, sins against us, do we forgive them once, twice? Do we forgive them on and on? What do we do? So Jesus responds with, I do not say up to 70 times, up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. In other words, if someone sins against us, we shall not limit the forgiveness that we give that person. That was the direct lesson that Christ was bringing out to Peter in this scripture. However, we also know that God would not ask us to do something he is unwilling to do. If Christ taught us that we should forgive our brothers 70 times 7, how much more will our loving God forgive us if we repent of our sins? As Christians, we've been given an amazing but unmerited gift, a gift that pardons us from the death penalty that our sins rightly deserve. To further illustrate this point, I'd like to contrast this principle against the attitudes and the approach in the world today. Sadly, an attitude of entitlement has replaced thankfulness with many people in society. So many people talk about how they deserve their fair share or how they expect certain things, certain rights, certain privileges, certain benefits. Rather than focusing on God and giving thanks, many focus on their own personal wants. When we focus inwardly, it's easy to stop being thankful for the blessings God has given us. A focus on self can lead us to an attitude that is the opposite of thankfulness. In 2 Timothy, Paul told us that in the end times, people will be what? Have you all heard this before? People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unloving, unholy, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. So that's an attitude that we can look around very much pervasive in society today. And this entitled, selfish attitude is the polar opposite of the attitude of thanksgiving, of gratitude for the amazing and unmerited forgiveness that our great God extends to us. So many in society think that they're either entitled to something just by their mere existence, or that they've earned certain things. And while we can certainly earn things in this life, 
we should be exceedingly grateful for the unearned gift of grace that our loving God has extended to us. The prophet Isaiah tells us that our, our sins are like scarlet, but they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Complete forgiveness upon our repentance. A path to eternal life, no matter what sin we have committed. Now that is something to be thankful for.